So the Pythagorean theorem, Pythagorean theorem is like the most popular theorem, popular math fact, pop, popular provable thing in math like there ever was. Like everybody knows about this to a certain extent. But we always need to maintain what factual information we have, meaning we need to make sure we know the situation where we can use it. I'm sure your teacher told you very well that it can be used only in right triangles. And you know you have a right triangle if that triangle has a right angle. When you have a right triangle, you need to be sure to know the names of each side. So this side is called a leg. This side is also called a leg. But the longest side, the side opposite the right angle, has a big old name. And it's called the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. Big name for the longest side of a right triangle. Um, when we talk about the Pythagorean theorem, we use variables. Well, we use letters to refer to each of these sides. The legs can be called A and B. And I'm going to write that in blue or a blueish color. The legs can be called A and B. Sometimes I call this the altitude and this is the base, so it kind of makes sense. But honestly, A and B are totally interchangeable. So either leg can be called A or B. And then the longest part, the hypotenuse, is always referred to as C. So we'll put a C there. That looks terrible. However, the take home point to this is that they relate all the time forever in the form A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay? This is always true, but the key is to always remember that the longest side must be here. So let's do some examples of requiring Pythagorean theorem. It is always a good idea to set, when you're doing problems related to the Pythagorean theorem, to set up the situation like this before a problem or before a problem set so you know exactly what you're talking about. And so what I've done is you see I've labeled it just like we did on the last page. And on this side, we have the um, actual equation or relationship. So here's a couple of problems. This problem, number one, has a side labeled Y. And we'll assume that's the missing side. And we have three and four. Notice the telltale box is there at the corner to let us know that that's the right angle. Because that's the right angle, the side opposite the right angle is always the hypotenuse. Or, in other words, we can call that side C. So we can refer to, we know that Y is C, and therefore 3 and 4 have to be A and B. As I mentioned before, kind of doesn't matter. Call them whichever one you want, and now you can relate the problem to the, um, the Pythagorean theorem. We can solve for Y. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Can't say that enough. And now what I'm going to do is replace those values by the values that are of this triangle. So 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to y squared. And I'm going to do my due diligence and solve. 3 squared is 9 plus 16 is equal to y squared. Add these guys together, I get 25 is equal to y squared. In order to solve for y, I need to take the square root of 25. And since we are dealing, I'm assuming that your teacher does not want the negative answer since we're talking about... Um, since we're talking about uh, uh, the actual length of a side, so I'm going to ignore that step for now, but we can talk about that later. Um, y is equal to 5. And so you've probably seen this 100 times already, but this is what we call a Pythagorean triple, where all the numbers come out really nice and you're good to go. We'll do one more that's a Pythagorean triple where we're solving for B or A, and then we'll go on to looking at problems where they don't come out nicely, and we'll use some of the facts that we have. So here's our next problem. We have, and now we're solving for M. Got to figure out what that is, that missing side. We're given 5 and we're given 13. But how do they relate to our Pythagorean uh, theorem and our ABC uh, notation of our triangle? Well, if we see the telltale box, across from the box is always the hypotenuse. Across from the 90 degree angle is always the hypotenuse. So this is certainly going to be C. So we'll say, okay, that's C, and it's helpful to determine what these guys are, and these guys could be either A or B, doesn't matter. I'll just put A here and B here. So now we are solving for B. So let's go ahead and set up our equation exactly the same way. We're using A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So we can translate that for this particular problem as 
5 squared plus b squared equals 13 squared. And since from last time we've now memorized our perfect squares, here's what we're going to get. We've got 25 plus b squared equals 169. And I'm going to use a little bit of my algebra skills from last year. Last year. I still want to isolate, sorry about that. I still want to isolate this variable. So I'm going to subtract 25 on both sides. And I'm left with b squared is equal to 144. And I, hopefully that number looks familiar to you. If b squared is equal to 144, it makes sense that b is equal to 12. By taking the square root of both sides, we get that b is equal to 12. Again, ignoring the negative number. So the next example that we'll see is when we have to actually simplify a radical. So here we go again. We've got another problem. Here we're going to solve for x. x is in the place of the hypotenuse, therefore x is c. 7 and 3 can be a and b respectively. So 7 squared plus 3 squared is equal to x squared. 7 squared is 49, 3 squared is 9, and that's all equal to x squared. When I add this together, I get 58 is equal to x squared. I don't love this example because I can't exactly show you what I want to show you, but if I take the square root of 58, what I need to be thinking of is all of my perfect squares. And because you've memorized it, you know we've got 1, we've got 4, 9, so forth and so on. And when I think of each of these numbers, I realize that none of them at all go into 56 evenly. And so at this point, I'm stuck, and this is what I have to do. If I could get a value to go into 56 evenly, a, a perfect square that is, I would definitely simplify it as we did the other ones. Maddie, not because I don't love you, but I think that this video is going to be too long for me to send to you soon. So what I'm going to do is stop and try to send it to you so you can have at least a couple examples. And we'll talk later. Take care. Made with DoodleCast Pro.